Joe, we've been doing this our hot sheet, our hot seat tracker uh, for head coaches. We've done San Pittman, Billy Napier. We go over to Waco, Texas tonight and talk about our good friend Dave, or, or my good friend, as you wanted to mention, because you want nothing to do with Dave Aranda, apparently. Okay. Okay. Uh, we go over to Waco. Uh, Joe, it has not been good since the the first couple of years under Dave Aranda. They got to the Big 12 title game, won a Big 12 title game, uh, and it's kind of fallen off since then. I, I I don't know how else to say this, but yeah, Dave Aranda's on on the hot seat. Yeah, I mean the three and nine that they had record they had last year. Um, I'm surprised that he made it to this off season, and, and it, maybe it's the fact that they just want some stability based on everything that's happened since Matt Rule and the coaching staff prior to that with the whole scandal that occurred. I will say I was very pleasantly surprised, though, by some of the kids that they added in the portal. They've got a very underrated portal hall for the Big 12. If things get turned around, I would willingly put faith in Daquan Finn to have a really good season. He was phenomenal this past year at Toledo. And I, I know that like I put faith in these random G5 kids all the time that I bring up. Mm -hmm. He well, was the last time you did it, it was for a guy named Jared Verse, and you actually didn't look too bad on that one. And that was an FCS guy, too. Mm -hmm. But Daquan Finn was one of the best players, if not the best player in the G5 this past year. He was getting looks when he entered the portal by a lot of other major programs that were looking for quarterbacks, and he decides to go to Baylor. If there's a guy who just randomly pops off and we're like, Daquan Finn, you mean the kid from Toledo? It could be him, but they have a complicated path for them to get back to a winning record situation. I, I guess I'd put this at like a seven because I think that it's the big 12. And if there is a coach who prepares his guys and gets them ready to go and, and they turn the tide, it's going to be him. But I just don't know how likely that's going to happen. And if he's already done too much damage. So, look, I mean, he did bring in some defensive pieces. He went and got an interior offensive lineman, brought Michael Trigg, the tight end, over from Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have some big-time departures. Like, Jake Roberts is going to Oklahoma, the, also the tight end. He loses uh, a running back as well. I understand. So, here's the thing with, I think, with Dave that people don't need to re remember. He was not for the portal. He did not want to go in it. He didn't want to attack it and now has even said somewhat in so many words publicly that now he has to. I mean, he just does not have a choice. He's going to have to go out there. I do agree with you on the portal hall in reference to, you know, he got Jamal Bell, the wide receiver from Nevada, mm -hmm. Steve Linton, the, the edge from Texas Tech, who actually had a pretty good year. He's rebuilt both safeties. He's got Cameron Jackson, who I or Jenkins, excuse me, who had a really good year at UNLV under uh, uh, Odom. The problem is, Joe, as I still don't think that they have the coaching nor around him, nor do I think that they have the talent. I no. think Dave was given a year because he's a really good guy, and I love him to death. But I just I, – I don't see it. Like, I, I just don't see where – now, the only way I could see it is is that now he's in a new Big 12. Maybe some things shake up. But, I, Joe, I'm just not confident – in a complete turnaround where he doesn't. And here's the question. What record does he have to have? Does he have to, does he have to go six and six? Does he have to go eight and four? Does he have to go nine and three? What does he have to have to keep his job? And I do know, how do I want to say? I do know that there were some thoughts that Dave might be the next DC at USC. I think that there was even, well, I'm not really even thinking. I think that there was conversations that were had about if he wanted to be the first part of Chip Kelly, a head coach leaving and going to be in a D.C. Or, or just a coordinator, I should say. So I, I like Dave a lot. I, he is very cerebral. But the problem that's always been his – or the thing that's always been his problem, Joe, is recruiting, and he's not dominating enough and getting the dudes in enough to be able to overcome some of the shortcomings. Yeah, at the end of the day, that the fact that there has been a seasonal regression, there has been a regression since that Big 12 championship game, it's been a slow drop-off every single year since then. That, to me, is proof that, one, they're not recruiting well enough in the high school ranks, and two, 
they're not doing a good enough of a job, as you talked about and brought up how he was reluctant to use the portal, has not done a good enough of a job filling those holes, filling those gaps through the transfer portal. Feeling it's all talent thing. acquisition. All right, all right, all right. All talent acquisition is important for success in college football. I think you bring up the most important part of this, though, is like how many games does he need to win to buy himself time? He's I would say seven, oh, okay. seven or eight, seven or eight, something like that. I mean, like, does he at least play close in all of them? Because he got blown out of a couple games last year. Like, yeah, they got blown bad, out. very bad. bad. Um, so I just think he's got to win eight games. I, I don't think I, that's I a mean, lot. It's a huge undertaking. That's a lot to ask of of him. I mean, Joe, we're going uh, in the year. We're going. Well, he's been there since 2020, so we're going into year 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. We're going into year five with him. Here's the thing, though, is that like that middle flesh of the Big 12. It's it's not great. Like, there's no reason why he can't. Yeah, like kick. he should be better than UCF, Cincinnati, all those teams. Right. These these are the hardest games that I wrote down for him next year: Utah, Colorado, Iowa State, Texas Tech. Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Kansas. Did you just say Idaho? Iowa State. I thought you said Idaho. I'm like, not the Valdostas or whatever they call themselves. No, no, no. Uh, the Vandals. The Vandals. My point is, they got one of the harder draws in terms of the teams that they have to play next year. But if there's a conference for a team to, to build a little bit of momentum and win some close games, it's Baylor. Maybe. I, I, I just have no real feeling on what Dave Aranda is going to do. I hope he turns it around. I think he's a great coach on the field. I think he's developed a lot of guys. I just – what's going to continue to be his issue and what has always been his issue, regardless of where he's been, it, whether it's Wisconsin or now at Baylor, okay, he's just not good enough at recruiting. And that's just the stone-cold truth. Where I'm, – I'm still so – confused why he took this job all right i'll tell you place. um him and orgeron had it out okay uh -huh. i think orgeron wanted to move on from him and i think that lsu's administration when matt rule left okay did push dave and and, and talked highly of him when matt rule left and went to carolina and that is how um, Dave got the job. You know what job he was about to get was UNLV. And huh. then the Baylor job opened up, and then Dave wound up going to Baylor. That's how it wound up happening. Huh. I don't th I, I don't think that Dave wanted to leave Baton Rouge, to be honest. I mean, it's such a weird, weird trajectory to go uh -huh. on to go on to become a head coach if if you I mean didn't Matt Rule leave. went there. I don't think that Baylor, I mean, Art Bryles was there. I mean, it's a building yeah. block, building stone for coaches to go elsewhere. It's a good it, it's just hard to win there. Very it's, hard. It, it, it's impossible to win there because like you gotta you have to compete in recruiting in the state of Texas with Texas Tech, Texas AM, Texas, TCU, SMU, and Houston. Joe, you didn't bring in one four-star recruit. I, I mean, right, right. He's getting his ass kicked. In, in he's getting his ass kicked. I mean, they are the. It, it's going to continue to be his problem. I, 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 I hate it for Dave. I, I like Dave a lot, but again, I'm going to continue to say it. He's just not going to recruit enough at a high enough level for you to win there. For anybody, for him to win there, it's not going to happen. It's crazy. I know. So it sucks. It sucks. Yeah. I, he does seem like a good guy. You know why? Good guys in in the coaching community normally get another year when they're night when they're nice. People who yeah, are assholes uh, don't get don't get second chances. Like Zach Arnett, who we argued about on Wednesday. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus. Bet Online, where the game starts.